Let's take a lap around the statue. When you get up close, you can see the erosion that I was talking about earlier. Uh, David's left foot is particularly worn down, and above the ankle, you can see what happens when that polish disappears. You can see it's almost spongy uh, in its consistency. If you look up, David's rib cage, you can see some of that shine that I was talking about earlier. That survived on this side because that left arm has been protecting it uh, from the elements. When you come to the back side, you can see more details that are not visible from the front. The first is the sling that actually comes down from David's left shoulder and goes all the way down to his right hand. Uh, from this angle, in his right hand, you can actually see that rock that I was talking about earlier as well. And then behind his right leg, you see the tree trunk. And the function of that tree trunk is nothing more than structural. In other words, what makes marble so good as a carving material is the fact that there is no grain to it. So you can cut at it from any angle. But because it lacks grain, it's a very weak structural material. So if I want to keep David's right ankle proportional to the rest of the body, there simply is not enough material there to sustain the weight of the entire sculpture. So I need to reinforce that leg. But I disguise my reinforcement as the tree trunk that you see there. Let's look at David from another angle. And this is the angle that I like best because I think it reveals how much of a technical challenge it was to create the sculpture. When you're looking at David in profile, if you take the rectangular base upon which he's standing and in your minds imagine it extended as high as the statue itself, you can kind of recreate what this block looked like originally. And the block that you should be imagining was a very tall one, but a very shallow one. In other words, the profile of David fills the entire width of the block itself. So David's left foot, his left knee, the outside of his left hand would have been pretty close to flush with the face of the block of marble. The backside instead, I'm convinced that the tree trunk curves inward because the block probably did as well. And that means that David's buttocks would have been pretty close to flush with the backside. That of course means that there was very little or any wiggle room or what we call margin for error in creating this. 